morning, everybody. It's Kim from Patriot Garden. It's super early in the morning. It's one of my favorite times to be in the garden. And I kind of wanted to show you around today the things that are going well, the things that can be fixed, and the things that are downright ugly. This video is a little on the longer side today, but there's so much to show you and so much I've learned that I wanna share with you, so stick with me. For those of you who have uh, subscribed to this channel, thank you so much for helping uh, get this channel off the ground. I truly appreciate it. And remember, uh, Patriot Garden is also on Instagram and Facebook, so you can follow me there. We have some great content coming this summer. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and the like button, and leave a comment. You know, it's so important to always face your garden uh, even with all of its problems and there's usually a solution and when there's no solution the solution is to get rid of the plant and start over here in Connecticut we have probably about 70 more growing days before our first frost so I've already planted some new seedlings but I do have to say this year all in all even with the unseasonably cool temperatures things seem to be going well and the things that aren't going well we'll be able to fix You've heard me say many times that your garden is your classroom. I learned that phrase, even though I knew the concept in my mind, the phrase came from Jess from Roots and Refuge Farm, uh, but she's right. The garden is where you learn and make mistakes, and you're gonna grow every year as a gardener by getting through some of those messy times. So I'm gonna take a couple more sips of my coffee. I got my snips, which I never go in the garden without, and we're gonna go take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly. My goal for this garden, uh, since it gets a lot of shade, was to create sort of a woodland garden with a very disguised path that you could find only by walking on it with great shade plants and large leaf hosta. And for the most part, I have achieved that. I have some beautiful lilies growing. I have color in this garden all the time, but coral bells have got to go. The coral bells have finished blooming, but what they've also done is they've covered up a lot of the other parts of the garden. I have some beautiful black-eyed Susan. My hosta's growing. My red-hot poker is around. The roses have bloomed once. I'm going to try to get in there and chop them down so that we'll get a second blooming before frost. Uh, Clematis is doing well. You can hardly see my bird bath and more beautiful lilies. The astle bee is just about to bloom and I've got to come in here and clean up all the hosta blooms. Now these are columbine, and as, as you can see, the seed pods are all dried up. It is self-seeding. I love the sound that it makes when you walk through the garden. I'll collect some for friends and send them off so that they can have this beautiful flower in their garden next year. There's a lot to do in this garden, and when it's all set, I'll show you the results. Now I do want to show you my grapevine. Uh, it's got some good, uh, some bad, and some seriously ugly going on, but I'm really excited about my grape harvest, and let me show you what I did. This grapevine is just a complete accident. I did nothing to ensure the success. Now I went around and I covered them with these mesh bags because as you can see, there's a bird's nest up there. So I figured I wanted to save some of the clusters for myself. So without disturbing the babies, every day I came in and put a few of these net bags on the clusters. I did leave a few of the clusters unprotected, as you can see up there, and they don't seem to be touching them yet, but we are far from harvest time. So let me show you a few things that are going on with this grapevine. First of all, that lace is the telltale sign for that bugger right up there, the Japanese beetle. They will turn your leaves into complete lace. Whenever you see them, don't leave them. Shake them off get them out of there. See you later. The next thing you can do is spray BT, which is an organic pesticide. The affected leaves are going to start dominating this plant. Look, look at all of them in here. Don't be eating my grapevine. Here's another thing you're going to see on grapevines that I just learned about. It's called a gall. I don't know if you can see it, but these white pearly things. It's really nothing that's going to harm your plant. It's not a disease. It's not an insect. What it is, is the plant's way of protecting itself when it's been injured. 
It's like when an oyster forms a pearl around a little um, agitation. So that's called a gall. I just learned that this year. So all in all, I'm pretty happy with the woodland garden. I have some cleaning up to do, and I have some insect patrol to do. Let's go on to my old pollinator garden. This garden's been around for a long time. This is about a 20-year-old pollinator garden. There's some things that are hidden, like some beautiful hosta. Uh, and I don't really mind that the different flowers come in and come out. My roses down at the end are doing beautifully. The phlox is coming through, and it is full of red bee balm. I am starting some purple bee balm, and I hope to put some of that in there as well. But it attracts hummingbirds and butterflies, and this is one of my favorite gardens. Again, it needs a little bit of cleanup, so uh, I'm showing you the garden in probably the worst case it's been, but in a week, this will look beautiful. A zinnia bed is my absolute favorite. I actually have some cucumber coming through, and I even have a baby cucumber. Uh, my philosophy this year was willy-nilly, and you can see that I really achieved that uh, somewhat accidentally, like this tomato is a total volunteer. Now on the back side, I don't know if you can see, but the chickens have been nipping at it and helping themselves to some leaves. But I am growing some fruit back here. And here's some more of that cucumber vine. So I really think this willy-nilly practice of mine this year was part of the success of the garden. But just look at the colors of these zinnia. you've been following the channel from the beginning, this is the giant Benares lilac that I started from seed. It's absolutely gorgeous. If you love purple, this is the flower for you. These little guys down here are the cherry bicolor profusion. They're smaller in stature and they were actually underneath the bed and they found their way to the edge to get some sun. And this patch of flowers gives the chickens a nice area of shade. My sunflowers are just warming up to this spot right here. They're not the biggest sunflowers I've ever grown, but again, it has been unseasonably cool. So I'm wondering if that's had an effect. But I'm really happy with this patch and I think I'm gonna do this again next year. Hey, coming around to my pumpkins and squash. I've got some good stuff happening here, some bad stuff happening here, and some interesting stuff happening here. First of all, we've got this leaf down here, which is really showing some signs of something called downy mildew. Downy mildew is yellow. It'll start with these little yellow spots. It'll spread, and then it starts to degrade your leaf. So I'll be on a seven-day regimen of copper spray, and I will take out the worst leaves like that one underneath there so that the plant has a shot at producing some fruit. I do have a pumpkin right here I can show you. So I know the vines are working. That looks beautiful. Let me show you something that I did. This vine and this vine are connected, but there was evidence of great vine borer damage or disease damage, I wasn't sure. But what I did was I cut off all the affected leaves and I buried the vine. And so now it is completely rooted in there. So the roots are now feeding that side and are feeding this side. And I think in doing that, I saved that plant. Look at the size of that blossom. This is the small butternut squash called Butter Baby. I have lots of fruit growing. I did have some pollinator issues. There's another one in there. But I think the pollination issues have been solved by pruning and making sure that the bees can find the flowers. I've got this trellis to keep it away from the pumpkins. I think it's doing really well. Now I also have that smaller version of an acorn squash called Honey Bear. And as you can see, I do have a few fruit down there that are looking really, really good. So all in all, I'm happy with this patch. And I'll be talking later about what I'm going to do for the soil in all of my beds and gardens next year that I think will make this patch even better. These are my gifted raspberries. I actually pulled off a few fruits. I see one right here. Not quite ready. I'm not sure if it's a summer bearing or a fall bearing, but I do know it's been practicing and the fruits are absolutely delicious. So I'm looking forward to next year. It'll take the winter off and come back even stronger and it may even spread. So I'm looking forward to that. 
Now this is what potatoes look like when it's time to harvest, almost time to harvest. People get all freaked out when they see their potato vines lying down and all the yellow, as you can see toward the end, there's a lot of yucky leaves and stems down there. All that means is that the foliage is dying and you're getting closer to harvest. Every once in a while, you'll get a little burst of energy, like right there in the middle, and it'll look like it's coming back but they're not. So it's gonna be time for me soon to harvest all the potatoes and then maybe have some time to put something in this bed before frost. I salvaged this little squash. This is one of those Ron Denise squashes. It's actually doing okay. It doesn't look great, but I took it out of the container because I did that as an experiment and it did not work. So I'm hoping to maybe get a few fruit out of this before the season is over. And there's some delicious purslane. I don't know if you know this, but you can eat this weed and it's growing everywhere. And my sweet potatoes are doing great. These are a long way from harvest. As you can see, they send out these runners and then the runners root. Oh, and there's more of that purslane. I'm so looking forward to this harvest, but we are a long way away. This is where there's some great things happening, some interesting things happening, and some downright sad things happening planted these beautiful blanket flowers to invite the bees in because I figured they'd have a hard time finding their way in here, but they haven't. This is routinely populated by bees. I even have some tomatoes growing and ripening in here. This is a complete volunteer tomato and I trellised it up with just a piece of, actually I think I used a weed whacker string, but it looks really great. These are my overwintered pe peppers. These are the overwintered peppers and they're doing awesome. I'm gonna have plenty of jalapenos. I have another jalapeno back there. And then I have my cayenne peppers here. They're very productive. I'm just waiting for them to turn red. They really like it in here. And then this is also a jalapeno. It's struggling a little bit, but it's starting to produce some fruit. So I'm gonna give it some more time. Now this mess in here is a volunteer tomato that I don't have the heart to get rid of. It is obviously a paste tomato, I can tell by the shape. So I'm gonna keep that. It's growing a lot of fruit. And I've got this cucumber in here that I put in here just as an experiment to see if it liked the hoop house. I put some, I don't know if you can see it, I took some fencing and just took strips of the fencing, attached it to the hoops of the greenhouse and the cucumbers are trellising up on that. I have a lot of evidence of fruit. Some things are starting to mature. And so I think this is gonna be a productive vine. It's looking very healthy. I had a little bit of wilt uh, in here, but I just cut the affected leaves out and it looks great. Now, the interesting thing is my watermelons. <laughs> As you can see, I have some fruit, but I don't think what we have left is enough time to have any productive uh, harvest off of this watermelon vine. The only reason why I keep it is because it's beautiful. I love the leaves. I love the shape of the leaves. I love its productivity in vines. It's got beautiful, strong, healthy vines. And so what I think I'll do is I'll just get started earlier next year. But we'll see what happens to this little guy. All right, the sad part is the peppers. Lots of blossoms lots of flowers happening but this morning I saw this the pepper plant is dropping its blossoms and the reason why it's dropping its blossoms is it's not warm enough Getting into the 50s at night and although I have all these beautiful beginnings of blossoms if I can't retain the heat in here as soon as that blossom is done and it falls off and the pepper starts forming that whole little stem will drop so I have to find a way to keep it warmer in here. I think one of the things I'm gonna do is in the heat of the day, I may just shut the greenhouse toward the end of the day and retain some of that heat for the evening because it's gonna be in the 80s this week, but it's gonna be down in the 50s at night. And I want some peppers. One of the projects on tap for the end of the summer is to enlarge this hoop house and make it higher. I'm going to frame it in. I have a new way to put the hoops up. I'll show you how to do that. Right now I'm going to let everything do its harvest and later in the summer or early fall when everything's done uh, we'll start tearing this down and building a new one. I just want to take a second to show you the amount of fruit 
that my tomato plants are making because it, even when they're green, it's just glorious. Now some of the issues I'm discovering with my tomatoes, oh, my lenses, got water on it, sorry. <laughs> Good in the tomatoes is lots of fruit. The challenging is they're not ripening. Uh, that is the temperature and it could also be that they're shaded. So I might have to use a little bit of pruning to make sure that they can see the sun and the sun can see them. One of the main problems in tomato plants is uh, fungus or bacteria or even um, a wilt that will come out of the soil. This is called septoria leaf spot. This can be really dangerous. This can take over fast. This is also highly contagious. You don't want to leave your leaf here. You also don't want to touch the plant after you've touched these leaves. And when you remove them, you don't want to leave them in your garden or anywhere near your plants. Now, I am running the risk right now of over pruning some tomatoes. As you can see, they're single stem for about two and a half feet. Uh, but I do want to get this off the plant. So what I've been doing is just taking off the leaflet for now. I'm going to get my snippers and then I'm going to make sure that I put that uh, in the burn pile or way off in the woods and then I'm going to wash my hand before I touch these tomato plants again. You might remember I did some container planting experimentation to see what I could grow in containers. This is a Roma VF paste tomato. And as you can see, I've got plenty of fruit on it. And I have done a lot of pruning on this plant, but it basically looks healthy. It looks like I'm gonna get some fruit. It is growing, the growing tip looks healthy. And so this plant I would consider a success. This plant is not doing nearly as well. I've got a lot of yellowing of leaves, which could be a water issue. It could not be draining as nicely as it should be. It is fruiting. There are some fruits. It looks like there's more blossoms coming on the top. So right now I'm gonna leave it. I'll wait for the fruit to ripen and then I'll figure out uh, what the drainage issue is here. And last, I put some Wisconsin pickling. Again, I have one plant that's looking really, really good. I've got some beautiful fruit coming on this plant. There's another one down here. This plant is looking like it has water issues. So I put a little compost in here the other day. Compost is a nice little boost of nitrogen that I thought would green up the plant. It has done some of that. I'll get rid of these leaves down here and I will keep my eye on this. I'm not gonna pull it out yet. Uh, it looks like it might be a little bit productive. All right, let's go into the main Whew, that was a burst of sunshine. Let's go into the main garden here and I'll show you what's going on. There is a lot of success going on in this garden. This is the midnight pear variety tomato. Beautiful fruits, an abundance of fruits. I am saving some of my carrot seeds. These aren't quite dry enough to save yet, but as you can see, there's lots of them. So I will have carrot seeds way into the future. Plus I love these blossoms, so I don't really want to get rid of them. I have a second harvest of basil coming along. It kind of likes these temperatures. The comfrey plant that will not die. Even some more flowers, look at that. Now I have some tea brewing in there. Comfrey tea is a wonderful foliar spray um, or just pouring it into the earth. You take your comfrey leaves, chop them up, put them in a bucket of water, cover them for a couple of days, and then either put in a spray bottle or pour it into the ground. These are a couple of radish plants that I just let grow. I've been harvesting these little pods and they're awesome in salads. So I will do this every year. I think I like the pods better than the radishes. My marigolds keeping watch. I grew these from seed and there's a ton of blossoms coming. I have a volunteer strawberry. See the runners? It won't fruit this year all, in all likelihood, but it will last till next year. We'll take good care of it. Carrot seed tapes seem to be working. I've got some nice rows of carrots. There's a couple of holes here and there, but they may still come out. 
I have a succession planting there and then a second one over here that is a little younger. I don't know if you can see some of those tiny carrots. And then I'll do a third succession here. And then when all of the tomatoes go, I'll put one more row in and see if we can get some carrots formed and ready for harvest before the winter. And then I will cover them up and harvest them all winter long. A succession of beets is coming. And some more of those beautiful Wisconsin pickling cucumbers on this side of the trellis and on that. They're doing really, really well. My onions are forming, they're forming slowly, but I have been harvesting the onion tops every day, putting them in a bag in the freezer, and I'm gonna make the best onion top pesto. These are magnolia tendril peas, and they are loving this weather. I did this as an experiment. I wasn't sure if they would come up, but they're really loving the cool temperatures at night. The Swiss chard is loving this weather. And as you can see, that willy-nilly planting, that intercropping uh, is really working for me. I've got onions and leeks and Swiss chard. I planted another spinach crop and it's starting to come up now. I took my kale down to the stems because we were having quite an insect problem. So I'll keep doing that until the insects go away and then the last leaves will be beautiful. What I am most excited about, my cabbage, I'm gonna have a ton of cabbage. I'll be doing a video on how to freeze cabbage. The leaves look great. There's no insect damage because they've been growing under this insect netting for their entire lives. And they formed such beautiful heads. I'm very excited about this harvest. We got some nasturtium along with a great crop of basil. I have harvested this basil about four times. I have bags of it in the freezer just waiting for fresh pesto in the middle of the winter. It's going to be awesome and it just keeps coming. This is a volunteer tomato. We got a lot of them in this garden. First time growing broccoli and I know that these plants look ugly because I have harvested the main a head of broccoli but as you can see if you leave the plants in you might get some additional shoots so I see evidence of that in all of the broccoli plants I'm just gonna leave them I do know you're, you're looking at my ugly leaves I will come in and do some pruning of these uh, there's some that are that really need to go and then hopefully the plants will be healthy enough to give us another crop of broccoli and the purple sprouted broccoli under the net that takes a long time to sprout and it actually loves the fall better so i'm just going to let it hang out here and see what happens tomato in amongst the leeks is a complete volunteer pull this leaf up you can see in here that it's growing some amazing fruit definitely needs some sunshine i'll come in back in here and prune that up a bit zinnias everywhere I love them at the beginning of the garden. They just are so beautiful and so happy. And they are certainly my favorite flower. And they just keep coming right up until frost. They're not frost hardy. So as soon as October comes, we'll lose the patch, but they will not stop blooming until frost. Got a little spicy Thai basil in here. If you've never had this stuff, you have to have it. It smells beautiful. It's tasty. And it's going to end up in my regular herb garden next year. The last thing in the garden proper are these volunteer currant tomatoes. I grew these one year as an experiment and they don't stop coming. They grow these tiny little currant sized tomatoes. Some of them are even smaller and it is prolific. There are tomatoes everywhere. Now they've been hit by that leaf spot as well. And I've been trying to be really good at pruning and spraying that copper, but I'll get a lot of tomatoes off that plant. Never get discouraged by the look of a plant when you have spot on the leaf or an ugly looking plant. The plant has a need to survive. It's going to produce fruit. You just have to keep going. You have to look for solutions and move around it. Don't give up completely unless the plant is actually dead or you foresee no way of it producing any fruit. Just take out your seeds and plant something new. Now for those of you who are interested in my herb garden video, I'll link it at the end of this video. It's really growing in well. I'm not 
harvesting anything right now. I'm going to let all the plants mature and then next year I'll be doing some harvesting. One thing I've decided not to grow again is this Tulsi basil. I like the smell. It's not my favorite. As an herb and even as a, an ornamental, it doesn't have a lot of value for me. So Tulsi basil's going and I think the Thai spicy basil will come in its place. My Elderberry is growing beautifully on this side, not so much on the other side, but I did treat it with compost, so I'm hoping it will revive. Calendula and the lavender. It never did flower again, but maybe one good flowering is all that one will do. But this one just keeps flowering. Beautiful lavender. I've got a lot of chamomile. These are spent flowers. The petals have dropped. Uh, I grew the chamomile from seed. And next year I will do a lot of harvesting. Right now I'm just letting the garden settle in. We've got mint and thai and lots of oregano. And the yarrow is doing its second flowering. It's so beautiful. And we've got more calendula over here. And chamomile. Now this elderberry is actually looking better. I see some new growth since I gave it some compost but it was looking a little yellow and a little peaked. But remember what I said, don't give up. So I'm just gonna leave it here. I think it'll find its way. Last thing I wanna show you today is that beautiful Malabar spinach. This is an edible spinach, but it's just so beautiful as an ornamental and it vines very quickly. As you can see, it's growing right up our white lady. I'm not gonna be eating this spinach, but I definitely I'm going to keep it around. So if there's one thing a garden teaches, it is patience and perseverance, especially uh, in the middle to late summer when things are starting to go wrong. Don't look at the problems. Look at how you can fix it. And then if it's not fixable, just plant more seeds. Happy gardening, everybody.